Hi, I'm Scott Farquhar, I'm the CEO of Atlassian and you're watching CBIT Media. Hi, I'm in Sydney with... Melissa Beaumont Lee. And you're an Atlassian, obviously. That's right, I'm an Atlassian and I manage the foundation. What does, uh, the, is it the Atlassian Foundation? What, what does it do? It is. Um, so the Atlassian Foundation exists to advance humanity through the power of software and education. And we work on a 1% model, where 1% of equity, 1% of employee time, 1% of profit, and 1% of software licenses are all donated to the foundation. Hold on. This means that um, if, I, if these founders, Scott and Mike, uh, want to sell for this multi-billion dollar uh, value of the company, like 1% of that goes to this foundation? The foundation has 1%. Yeah. Okay. And the same goes for all turnover you do? A 1% of profit, yep, goes okay. to the foundation. The employees also get 1% of the time, right? That's right. So that's um, five days a year to volunteer for their charity of choice. Awesome. What do they do for the foundation? Uh, well, for example, we um, just came back, 11 of us came back uh, from a visit to Cambodia to view our Room to Read project. So okay. Room to Read is an education uh, not-for-profit. Uh, based. Uh, they work in Asia and Africa and we support their programs in Cambodia. And uh, 11 of us went over to, to meet the girls that we support and also to uh, view one of the libraries that we've built and also have a look at the reading and writing instruction pilot that we've also funded. So um, it was an exciting time for us. It was actually really life-changing. Yeah. Um, the Atlassian Foundation has donated more than two and a half million dollars to Room to Read with that focus on Cambodia, but to meet the girls and their parents was just an amazing experience. So um, one could say that you have the most valuable and interesting job in the whole company. Could that be? I love it. I love my job, but um, but there are many Atlassians that love their jobs too. So, yeah. so I wouldn't want to steal that title from them. But I, I love. Coming okay, for this interview, <laughs> I'll, I'll just give it to you, and you can you can Thank take you. it. Um, so let me give you, uh, people some background. So when a couple of months, or I don't maybe years after we started as an Atlassian expert, Atlassian started something they call starter licenses. Yes. Um, a lot of um, companies have this freemium ma model where you can go for free until a certain threshold, like projects, or for Atlassian it's users, like mm -hmm. 10 users. Mm -hmm. And um, Atlassian would say, no, we, we don't do this freemium thing. Mm -hmm. You have to pay $10, yes. which is not much, no. but still you have to pay. Like you have this payment hurdle, mm -hmm. all this bureaucratic thing. I need to get some uh, credit card somewhere from a company. I thought it was an awful idea because uh, it would kind of uh, limit the amount of people um, to to just try for free, like with every other software. And um, what Atlassian does uh, with these ten dollars, can, yeah. can you say that and yeah, how much so, uh, so you collect with that? So it's more than two and a half million dollars in ten dollar increments. So everyone who um, who donated that ten dollars for that ten dollar users that ten ten user starter license has contributed to making a huge change in Cambodia. And I met the girls, and they are so grateful. So it really it really has worked out well. We've actually impacted more than one hundred and fifty thousand girls, mostly in Cambodia now. And these girls now have hope. They have um, access to education and access to a better life, and to be able to break out of that poverty cycle. All thanks to our to our purchases of the ten dollar starter licenses. And um, those libraries is that kind of um, hip in Cambodia, or do they do they don't care if they have like it's it's a library with books, right? Yeah, it's it's, it's not a library with iPads or uh, this thing. And do they actually? use this library or is it just like uh, some people that come in they can do. you say something so, about that yeah so room to read is a learning organization and first of all they started giving books that were mainly in english and mm -hmm. that had some that had some results but not not a lot so what they did is they became the um world's biggest one of the world's biggest um publishers of children's books that nobody's ever really heard of mm -hmm. um so they actually commission local people local authors and they run workshops to teach them how to write and how to draw and these uh, local people the local people in cambodia produce these children's books and they're the books that room to read then publish and put in the libraries so that they're age appropriate so that they're attractive um, and also so that they're in the local language because there just wasn't much of a market for local language yeah. titles 
H how about I'm a or, or if I was in a Cambodian uh, girl yeah. and I couldn't read, what what, uh, what am I going to do? Which is why we've started funding the reading and writing literacy pilot. So that's teaching teachers how to teach the skill and love of reading. So it's really important that they get those basics down. And so we've also made... Is that a big problem or is it just like... Um, yeah, literacy. People say in Germany it's a big problem that people can't read, but still it's a very tiny uh, literacy, number of percentage. Literacy rates are a huge problem in Cambodia because... You might know a little bit about the history, but the Khmer Rouge came in and uh, killed a quarter of the population, mm -hmm. and they targeted the educated people. And so what you what you have is you have a country with very few well-educated people mm. because they were they were the victims of um, of this terrible campaign by Pol Pot. Um, so really, Cambodia is crying out for education, and these girls value it more highly than anything else. Um, and, and, and they're getting it through the Room to Read programs that are funded by the starter licenses. Awesome. Okay, let's talk about um, a special project that you've set up, uh, which is which project? Uh, make a diff, make a diff .org. Yeah, yeah, what is it? Uh, it's a crowdsourcing website, and uh, the idea is that we can link charities and technology experts. So um, I regularly get emails from wonderful charities, wonderful not-for-profits with these great technology needs that would really help scale their businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's only so many volunteers that we have at Atlassian. And even though everyone gets five days a year to volunteer, it's just... The, the demand is so It's not going to be a big software that comes out of five it's, days, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you can add it all together and you can actually really, you can really make a difference, but the amount of requests that we're getting through, we really wanted a platform that opened it up to external volunteers. Mm -hmm. So this platform that we're currently developing, which is um, powered by JIRA, um, it's makeadiff.org, and we're developing it now, and it will be a place where charities can come and log their projects, and then developers and technology experts can work on them any time of day or night. Okay, makeadiff.org. Um, I fully understand if you are so successful in helping Room to Read, that if I was a charity, I would one day like be attracted by the story of Atlassian donating so much money and raising that and uh, really making a difference. So yeah. I would come to you, but how about all these? And I fully understand that those charities need developers to help them scale, to help them make funding and other things easier. But what is the, um, in the crowdfunding platform, what is the motivation of the developers to join in? Oh, so For the good not, cars? Or, so uh, it's not crowdfunding, it's just crowdsourcing. Oh, sure. So uh, people, sorry. even at Atlassian, are always looking for volunteer opportunities, but it's really hard to find skilled volunteering opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's value in going out and, and, and painting or going out and packing, but where real value really lies is where you can use your skill set, your technology skill set that you use day to day. That's really what we found the not-for-profits were craving. Okay, I'm, I'm starting to understand. So if um, one of the people watching this is a developer yeah. and they think, uh, I would want to give something back yeah. of what I get from my skills, mm -hmm. um, you'll offer a platform where ca they can choose um, which cause they may want to uh, support. That's okay. right, that's yeah. right. But at this stage, the platform's still in development, so we're actually really keen to get volunteers to help us build the platform. Ah, okay. Yeah, so we do have a few external volunteers now. It's possible to log on to makeadiff.org, register, um, which is really fast, and then start helping us build the platform. Okay. It really is that fast. And um, is it documented, or do I have to send you an email to, no, to get no, in? Or? No, as soon as you register, you're in. We, okay. we trust you. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and then I got a, uh, a stash account and can, uh, yeah, can, can commit? Yeah, you can commit straight away. And okay. we, actually, we actually have a guy overseas who's been doing that um, for several awesome. weeks now. Yeah, but we want more people to, to help us develop the site. So, um, so if you log on, it's there. And then once we get the site to a, a point where charities are then able to log on and it's user-friendly and they can post their projects, we'll open it up to the world. Can you say something about the motivation of the developers who do that already? So um, for Atlassians, are they just having this 1% time and think, oh, I have to do something, now I do that? Or what, what, is, what is it I get out of that? Yeah, how it 
started was that I, I was getting these emails from not-for-profits asking for help with their technology needs. Um, and there were great technology projects, great organisations, but we just weren't able to help everyone. Um, and then I was speaking to the Foundation Council, uh, which that's a group of um, employees at Atlassian who also um, make funding decisions. Um, for the foundation, and um, and they also were having the same idea um, in that they were getting requests from not-for-profits um, that were really wanting help with their technology needs. Um, so two guys, uh, Graham and Matt, on the foundation council, they're both developers at Atlassian. Um, they had the idea for Make a Diff, this crowdsourcing website linking charities and developers at the same time that I was having this. This, this need to somehow want to want to help all these charities that were approaching us but not be able to help everyone. So it all came together at the same time. The three of us had the idea together. And then what's been happening is we've been having our hack days at Atlassian mm -hmm. uh, where we get about 10 people in a room just to, to help develop the site. And so we've had about 50 Atlassians helping us build Make a Diff. Um, and then we had another 30 uh, students, university students. They actually kicked it off. They slept in the office um, and did a hackathon, and that really kicked off Make a Diff, the um, the building of the platform. And, um, and when was that? Uh, that was in March last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they they did this hackathon, and it and it really started to gain momentum at that point. Um, and then um, now we're looking for external developers um, to, to just log on to makeadiff.org and start, start hacking away and help us out so that we can get the uh, platform up and running so that it's user friendly for not for profits to log on and, and put their projects on there. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Thanks,